Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part three of the MIG Welding Basics series and it's about setting voltage and wire feed speed. And the method that I'm talking about today is setting wire feed speed first based on the thickness of the material and then getting a piece of scrap and then setting voltage to get that smooth bacon frying sizzle sound. That's the method. Now if you've got your own machine, you probably already pretty much know it and you know what voltages and wire feed speeds it takes to weld certain thicknesses of metal. This is this is a useful method if you uh, you know if you were parachuted into a job shop somewhere and there was a machine there with a, nothing but a pair of vice grips on the knob with no increments. This is a way to get something dialed in no matter what the machine dial says. There is a there's a little chart on my website. It's got a few little numbers on it that you use to multiply with and you get a pretty good idea on what wire feed speed you need no matter what thickness. So Let's take a peek at that chart real quick. Now let's start at the top. This is based on the premise of using one amp for every one thousandth of thickness. And, and just as a, as a pointer, this really only holds true to 200 to 250 thousandths. Obviously, you don't need a thousand amps for using one inch thick material. But it's a good rule of thumb for up to about 250 thousandths of an inch. So the example we're using is eighth inch material, which is 125 thousandths. That's 125 amps. And then there's a different factor of wire burn off to achieve that amperage for each size wire. So for 023 slash 024 wire, three and a half is the number. So you multiply three and a half times 125 if you're welding eighth inch material and you get 437 inches a minute. So now all I got to do is measure wire feed speed and it's pretty accurate because rulers and tape measures don't need to be calibrated and they don't lie. Digital readouts on machines sometimes like this thermal arc here they can be off 10, 20, 30 percent sometimes, you know, but uh, typically when you hit a trigger on a, on a simple welder like this, you, you press the trigger and you count off six seconds or use a stopwatch for six seconds and then you measure it, that, it is what it is. And you add a zero and that's your inches a minute of wire feed speed. So where do you start on a machine like this? Let's zero in on the knob here real quick. One thing we know and can use to our advantage is that Wire feed speed motors typically all max out at around seven to eight hundred inches a minute. This thermal arc maxes out at seven hundred inches a minute. That's as high as it even reads out. This one I have already measured the wire at six seconds and it's closer to eight than seven. So I know that if I set it at 50, I'm darn close to 400 inches a minute. And if I know that, I know that halfway to 50, I'm pretty darn close to 200 inches a minute. So that gets me in the ballpark pretty quickly. I, if I want 250 inches a minute, I'd probably dial it somewhere around right there. Th this is an infinite setting here on the wire feed speed, but this is what's known as a tap or click setting here on the voltage. And the only drawback here is that you can't set this while welding. But, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to take a stab at, I'm going to find the 250 inches a minute right here. And get it real exact and then I'm going to get a piece of scrap metal and I'm going to set this thing down to about right there what I know is way lower than what it will need. Weld a little bit, we'll show that. Click it up a notch, we'll show that. Click it up a notch and that should be about right. We'll show that and then we'll keep going until it's too hot. And then when I get the settings right with 030 wire, we'll get, we'll get some lap joints in eighth inch metal and we'll weld some with this machine and some with the thermal arc at the recommended settings there using the chart and maybe everyone will leave happy. <laughs> now, I hadn't got this figured out for the metric system yet, but um, I deal in inches a minute, so that's what I'm talking about in this video. I'm using 030 wire in this right now, and for using 030 wire, and I'm going to be welding on 8th inch thick metal, that's 125 thousandths thick, so I take that 125 thousandths, multiply it times 2, and that's my wire feed speed, 250 inches a minute. Underneath this YouTube video, if you're watching it on YouTube, in the description box there will be a link that will take you to a page where you can print that chart off or look at it, as well as this chart that breaks it down uh, pretty much for everything up to a quarter inch. Now, if I want to guess at that, I could get pretty close, but I can also get even closer by measuring that off. So I'll just take a stab at that. Right. 
I should be getting pretty close to that 250 inches a minute, which means I need 25 inches of wire here. And I have got about 26 inches of wire. So, close enough. All right, now what we're going to do is leave that wire feed speed alone and set the voltage really low. I've got the voltage set on the number two tab setting. That's what 250 inches of wire looks like with way too little voltage. Now I increased it just one notch up to the number three setting. Way better. That actually would be okay for, for you know something thinner. Increased it again. That's where we're going to wind up welding at the number four setting. That's nice and smooth, but even at five, it's still okay. Just a little, a little hot, starting to rattle a little bit. And then at six, now it's getting ragged, starting to rattle and pop, and it's a little bit too much. So setting it back down to four, let's see what that does. Once again, this is 250 inches a minute of 030 diameter wire. That was measured with a ruler for six seconds and then add a zero. So I got I got 26 inches of wire, so it's just a little high. Now I got this bird's nest because I ran out of 030 wire and changed over to 024. And I figured, well, let me just film and set the machine for 024 wire. And then right away I hit the trigger, got that pop sound, and the wire jumped back and fused to the contact tip. And then it bird's nested because I, I had forgot to adjust my tension screw to allow it to slip a little bit for this small diameter wire. Bird's nests are really common with small wire like 024 as well as softer wires, some stainless wires and aluminum wires and things like that. So you got to allow for a little bit of slippage on your drive rollers so it won't just kink the wire and continue to kink it. It welded to the tip there. I, pro I might have even accidentally had the wire touching the part I was welding. And, and that when you do that, it'll cause it to blow like a fuse sometimes, arc right back to the contact tip, and then you got problems. So I filed it to try to break that little area of weld loose and twisting it a little here. And I can see that I did break it loose. So I got lucky. And I'm just going to reuse it, which is, it wasn't bad at all. If it's bad and, and leaves jagged edges and all that, then it's going to cause you feeding problems. But sometimes you can get lucky and, and keep using the tip. Best practice, change the tip out. I know that, but sometimes you that's the only tip you got. And it's Sunday afternoon, and you can't get another one, and you got to get something done to deliver to a customer. All right, so we'll refeed this wire now back through, and this time... We'll adjust the tension screw to allow for a little slippage in case that happens again. So we won't get a bird's nest, maybe. So I'm going to feed it through, and it's the best, best idea to uh, not have the contact tip in there when you're doing this. And so I'm going to adjust it now. I'm going to back off on that tensioner to where it slips a little bit, like that. because this wire is pretty small and easy to kink. And so that should do it. I'll retract it again and then we'll get to welding again. Now what I'm going to do next is same thing here. I'm going to use a really low voltage setting and then I pumped it up one notch and it got better immediately and it's still good. And actually this 024 wire is very forgiving on low voltage and not, it wasn't until I got up to the, the 6 setting on the voltage where it kind of really got out of hand. We'll show you that in just a sec. All right, right here we're on six and that is just too much and just about ready to fuse to the tip. You can see right there how it's balling up a lot and if I'd have kept welding with it I probably had problems. So let's weld now at the correct setting. We've got we've got over 400 inches a minute here, about 430 inches a minute this small wire with it set on the four tap setting and it's doing a really good job. We'll do a little pushing here as well. I push and I pull both just depends on the situation if I need to see where I'm going more than I need to see where I've been but did good. 
Now the settings that I'm talking about on these little charts are for flat and horizontal welding. If you try to weld vertical uphill like this lap joint, they're going to be a little hot. But what you can do is just select a thickness, one or two thicknesses below what you're going to weld, and that usually works out pretty well. This is quarter inch thick metal, 250 thousandths. I use the same settings that I just used on that eighth inch thick lap joint with 024 wire. Just went uphill and it worked out pretty well. Now let's talk about the thermal arc now using O35 wire. You can see the chart again for O35 wire you use a factor of 1.6 and in this case I would need 200 inches a minute. I've got it set at 240 here because when I actually measured it it took that to get to get it to read 200 using my ruler. So we'll see what this does at 19 volts and with the machine set at 240 inches a minute but what is more likely closer to 200. You can see what the amperage and voltage are reading out. It looks like I'm not being very steady there. But pretty good job. Nice and hot for eighth inch steel. I didn't do much manipulation there. I just kind of drug it. And now we'll bump it down just a little bit to somewhere around 220 readout, which is would be just a little bit lower than 200. And I'll do a little bit of torch manipulation and see what that does. This thermal arc fabricator is an inverter power source. And so it, I found it, it welds okay when you have it set at exact recommendations, but when you get very far out of scope at all, it really acts up. It's doing fine here, but I tried it at 17 and 18 volts with that wire feed speed setting and it would hardly even weld. But again, it's doing just fine when you set it like it's supposed to be set. Now this is just one way of setting voltage and wire feed speed. It works for me without a chart. It's repeatable. It's more accurate than just grabbing a piece of scrap and eyeballing it, but it's definitely not the only way. So if you got a better way, I would love for you to share it. We'll all learn something from that. Leave a comment and tell us how you do it. You're welding on a Sunday afternoon. You got to get the part delivered by Monday morning. You run out of wire. I'm using 030 wire. But I've got a spool of O24 handy. What do you do?